The room smells so good. Happy Arbeg Day to y'all. Happy Arbeg Day indeed. Yeah, the back Saturday of Feshala, which I'm not sure exactly when it was declared Arbeg Day, but at least since 2011. Yeah. That was when the first release uh, celebrating the day came out anyway. Yeah, nice. What Did was the first one, Rick? Uh, the first one was Alligator. The Alligator. Yeah, so-called for the uh, aesthetic, the heavy charring left on the new American white oak. Nice. You ever tried it? No, I haven't. They're into their char, the Arbeg boys, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, I never, I've never sampled it either. And I think we'd be pretty fucking lucky to find one. Oh, big time. At, a, um, at an affordable price, anyway. Exactly. At a reasonable price at all. Mm. But we do have a, a fine selection of Arbeg Day releases mm. to uh, wrap our lips around. What are we looking at today? Well, well just to celebrate the day. It's not a... That's the newest entry to the core range. Busting out the wee beastie, five-year-old. A five-year-old whiskey. Now, mm. only those geniuses at Arbeg could market a five-year-old whiskey <laughs> and have it sell. It almost doesn't worth, be worth mentioning. <laughs> um, it's entirely possible that it only got announced into the core range like after that sold a fuckload of it. <laughs> <laughs> but other, yeah, we've both talked outside of the show about this. We both think that this is going to be pretty rough, but this is a first for both of us. It is. And she smells young. Hmm. Real young. I'd say about five years and three days. <laughs> It does, amongst the peat, the room is smelling fucking beautiful. But amongst the peat, there is a, there is sort of a nice high sweetness. There is, the sweetness of youth. This is, <laughs> you know, it's, drinking this will be close to statutory rape. <laughs> I barely touched the bitch and she was asking for it anyway. <laughs> oh. Becky's not going to be happy about that. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> mm. And we thought, well, we didn't think. It was basically Mick had one and it was the other one was in my price range. Uh, we got Grooves from the 2018 and Drum from 2019. Nice. I'm not sure if I've tasted the Drum. I have. I've gone through a bottle of the grooves. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember tasting it, but I don't remember what it tastes like or smelt like because I had a severe case of Colombian flu. I do recall <laughs> you having your nose over it for a fair amount of time going, nah, I'm getting nothing. It was as close as I could get to grooves without getting my eyes wet. <laughs> And I still couldn't smell a fucking thing. Yep, it's true. I was there. Yeah. I seen it. <laughs> well, run us through a bit of the history of Arbeg Day, Rickus. I know fuck all about the history of Arbeg Day, <laughs> so to speak. Do you know much? No, nah, fuck not much no. about it. All I know is that it's um, yeah, like I said, it's a back Saturday of Fish Isla, and I. Don't really even know what that entails, except that it's a massive festival on Isla. Yes, that everyone usually gets amongst, but and we all amongst. we all know why it hasn't been a um, a thing for the past two years. No, it's been it's, very it's, much an online thing for the last two years. Yeah, yeah, they got with the times and they've been hosting online events and all the games and music and entertainment and tastings have been done via live stream. Uh, they supply links. Uh, you can print your, to print your own props, um, even uh, t-shirt transfers, and you're encouraged to share your photos using the hashtag ArbegDayLive, which yeah first happened in 2020. Yeah, cool. Well, run us through some uh, Arbeg Day releases. Then. That's I can do that for you. Good man. 
So we said t alligator, 2011. In 2012, the creatively titled Day, which was made for Pete Heads, who also loves sherry whiskey. Yeah, right. Well, it was finished for six months in refill sherry butts. So made for you. Pretty much. And I mean, I suppose myself as well. I mean, you started as a sherry man. I started as Very a Pete Very much head. so. I started as a space eyed sherry man. Oh, man. <laughs> and, and, a, and a Pete uh, fucking. Oh, whatever the opposite to enthusiast yeah, is. Yeah, that's exactly what I was looking D for. Dethusiast. <laughs> Malthusiast. You were, you were malfused indeed. <laughs> Distinctly malinfused. Mm. That all changed in 2015. It did. We'll get to that shortly. Uh, 2013. I love this. the name of this. Hardbog. I matured in Manzanilla sherry casks. Uh, the whiskey has a big smoky punch, but is sweetened by the maturation in the sherry casks. Nice. In 2014, the Oro Verdes, uh, which was released in time for the Football World Cup in Brazil. Oro Verdes basically means golden green, which coincidentally the colours of the Brazilian flag. Awesome. Uh celebrated on the 31st of May and Ardbeg hosted uh, the World Swamp Football Championships in Edinburgh's St. Andrew's Square. Eight teams of thoroughly unprofessional footballers <laughs> gathered to compete. Matches went for 10 minutes. Uh, the nature of play was described as difficult to stay on your feet, let alone kick a ball. <laughs> and fouls were described as common. Nice. <laughs> Uh, the Cambridge wine merchants were the ultimate victors and recipients of the trophy. Yeah, nice. I encourage you all, we'll put a link up in the show notes, go and check out the photos. It's an absolute quagmire. It is filthy. It's fucking hilarious. A lot of the matches just simply, they fuck the ball. They just started flinging mud at each other like shit-covered monkeys. Superb. Uh, there's a good photo, I think, of... Um, of our mate Becky Paskin doing her mud angel in the middle of the field. <laughs> uh, yeah, everyone is just absolutely putrid. It looks like a, it would have been a sight to behold and probably more fun to participate in. Yeah, cool. Sounds like a lot of fun. Mm. 2015, when my love affair with Pete began. Perpetuum, which we have tried. We have indeed tried it. So we got to try that at the... Uh, um, at the, it was just called the Whiskey Show. I think it was it? the, was it the World Whiskey Show? Yeah, maybe. I don't know, I sure. do. Maybe the Australian I Whiskey Show? I still have show. the program, just oh, out of reach. <laughs> Should have looked. I thought it was just called the Whiskey Show. It probably was just called the Whiskey Show. Yeah. And that was the 200th anniversary of the distillery. Um, it was a mixture, mixture of many cast types intended to give great complexity and harmony. Do you remember, of course you do, I remind you of it every fucking time, the, um, uh, where have I got it, the diffuser thing. Ah, the, the ha. Yeah, the sample. cloud, mm. the cloud in the high-tech carafe. Yes, I do remember that. Mm. Yeah, it was like, I wonder if you can get peat flavour for your vape pen oh that's a and now I have a new thing to look into because <laughs> that's essentially what I was doing was inhaling that and trying to breathe it out again yeah you were trying to vape uh, peat smoke before, no, you were before trying vaping to... was off yeah, fuck, you... fuck I'm ahead of the curve <laughs> you were trying to vape Arbeg before <laughs> vaping or Arbeg were a thing <laughs> I think essentially created the first vape without even knowing. <laughs> yeah, when they first invented, inverted commas there for you listeners, uh, they claimed to conjure the thick, peaty coastal mists of Isla with a new high-tech carafe created for UK bars. The revolutionary serving tool, again in inverted commas, named Ardbeg Ha. It could be pronounced Darren, for all I know. 
uses ultrasonic pads or ultrasound pads that emit rapid vibrations producing micro droplets that form a drinkable cloud which drinkers can consume through a straw. Yeah, I didn't see a straw, straw straight to the nostril. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking rail it. <laughs> Trying to rail a mist. <laughs> It was created in collaboration with Harvard University professor and inventor David Edwards and his Paris-based art and design center, Le Laboratoire. That it's basically just a fucking pond fogger. They use ultrasonic transducers to create a cool, dense mist. Uh, the ones that use... They, they were the trend for fucking ages. You get them down at Bunnings, for fuck's sake. For They have fancy ones now with LEDs in them for about 70 bucks. That there's a fuckload of DIY vids it's on YouTube. Like, yeah, right. I love it how they're claiming that's the, the most technological thing they've ever fucking done at the time. Um, they're typically floating plastic rings that hold a transducer plate three to four inches under the water's surface. And when the powers apply, it just vibrates at an ultrasonic speed. So you basically creates just, a mist. You just basically fill a fucking. One of those, what do they call them? Pond, bowl. No, no, no. Those, carafe. Those fucking, you know. What do they do? What do they look like? You know, those misty things you buy from the fucking you know, crystal shop down the road. Or not a nebulizer, a fucking, a nebulizer is a medical thing. Yeah. Like a fucking. But it does, nebulizer does a similar thing, I believe. Yeah, so you just fill that with fucking Arbeg and boom, Bob's your uncle. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Um, what was I thinking? Vaporizer. That was the... Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it is the same thing. But they were all the trend for ages you'd see them in people's fawn, ponds. They're probably fucking terrible if you, for the fish that were in there. Yeah, that, 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 that wouldn't be great. But you see yeah. neb, uh, vaporizers in people's houses now and they put... Essential oils and shit in it. You walk in and they've got this oh, okay. little you know, misty thing going off in the corner and they're like, oh, I think know, it smells these, of patchouli. These things vibrate like and create like a noticeable cloud. They they might do the same thing at a lower frequency maybe yeah, right. if that's how they even work. I thought it was just through heat. Yeah, God. Those knows. things, yeah. Ha is a Scottish word used to describe a cold fog that sweeps in from the sea without warning, often enveloping Isla and the distillery which clings to its coastline. Ibeg proposes the tool should be used for its 10-year-old Ugadal and Korovrekan expressions, funnily enough the core range at the time. And Dr. Bill Lumsden is quoted to say, the ha rolling in from the sea is as familiar sight to island life as the precious peat which influences our whiskies. We believe that in this sampling ritual, we have captured the essence of its elusive qualities. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Should I tell you what? This is brutally, brutally young. Yeah? Brutally I haven't young. gone down yet, but I don't mind the nose. A little bit of menthol sting. There's something else in there that's kind of like acrid and bitter. I mean, you can sense the whiskey it's going to be, but that is a long way from the 10. Oh, yeah. High-end sweetness is nice, but there's a lot of fucking sting to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can feel my esophagus hating it. You got any legs on this, or...? And they're quite fucking thin. Nah. Pretty runny. <laughs> no, there's not... Um, there's not much to be said for this. Uh, there is a bit of a high-end... high note to it, you're right, but it's... Uh, she's raw. She's raw mm. as... She's rough as guts, let's she's, be honest. Yeah, she's quite sweet, but it's fucking pretty burny. Pretty peppery. And that... Yeah, that pepper burn that starts kind of towards the back of your tongue goes all the way to your stomach it really does um i'm it's certainly not something i'd 
go and reach for often no. when, when looking for a dram at all. No. But, you know, again, testament to the marketing geniuses at Arbeg that they've <laughs> moved a bunch of this product and yeah. they marketed it really well. It was a monster of a dram. Yep, concur. Young and intensely smoky with a rich, explosive mouthfeel of chocolate tar. I reckon the tar I fucking agree with. Yep. And savoury meats, cracked black pepper and sappy pine resin on the snout. There's a lot of pepper on it, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Brutal. Yeah, yeah, she's a bit young for me. Mm. 2016 release, The Dark Cove, inspired by the recollection of how early distillers would smuggle whiskey from Ardbeg Cove into black painted ships. So substantial was the illicit whiskey trade between the island of Isla and mainland Scotland that excise officers stationed a revenue cutter offshore to inter intercept smugglers' boats. No wonder they painted them black. There must have been a lot of people running into other people in black boats, <laughs> running without lights. On that's a, uh, on a dark night, dark cloudy so night. A lot of cunts are going to run into each other, aren't they? Yeah, I just had an idea for a short film, like comedy skit. Nice. <laughs> that would be pretty fucking funny. Like sad, but funny. Imagine the cars that lay on the bottom. Mm. I wonder if, um, going back to our last Ardbeg episode, when we were talking about the whiskey in space and the super gravity, if there's casks on the bottom of the ocean there, hey. that could be some of your experiment in progress. Perfect. Mm. I don't know if the pressure's going to be quite what we were talking about at, uh, at the it's depth. It's going to be more than... It's going to be more than one atmosphere, though. Yeah, were we were we talking about the Mariana Trench in that episode, though? Oh, we were just talking about having them fucking deep somewhere. Yeah, true. But, yeah. but anyway, yeah, go back and listen to that episode. We shouldn't rehash that. No. <laughs> well, what did they bring out in 2017? 2017 was the Kelpie. Ah, the Kelpie. Which was named after the mythical animals of the legend around us. Kelpies were shape-shifting spirits, which usually appeared as horses or ponies. There's no such thing as magic ponies. But they were once maleficent creatures, and although seeming tame and particularly friendly to children, oh, sinister, <laughs> once mounted, the rider would not be able to dismount and would be dragged to the bottom of the ocean or river and eaten. Yeah, right. Well, I've, I've never been to a, an Arbeg Day event. Um, in Sydney or elsewhere. But mm -hmm. in 2017, for the Kelpie, they did the Sydney Arbeg Day event at the aquarium, which I think was well-themed. That is cool. Mm. It would have been fucking cool. And it was Arbeg night as well. Okay. So they were walking around drinking Arbeg and fucking looking at the sharks swimming around the aquarium. And that, That's sick. That would have been... a very fucking cool experience, I reckon. I've never... Have you been to the aquarium before? Yeah, I've been to the aquarium a couple of times. Okay, never have. Always one or two. Yeah, it's, it's I went to one cool. in Auckland and fucking loved it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, love that sort of shit. Yeah, it's cool. I love uh, like just fish tanks in general. You just get so meditative. You just get lost staring at a fish tank for hours. You certainly can. A couple of friends had really good ones in high school. Probably didn't help that, yeah. Our eyes were very, very red. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, staring at a fish tank in that kind of state isn't conducive to blinking. <laughs> Our eyes no, got true. very sore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they would. Mm. What about 2018? 2018. Boom. Grooves. Here we are. So named as the cask used were very well charred X red wine which resulted in deep grooves on the inside of the cask, which then resulted in greater surface area for the spirit to interact with. 
package obviously inspired by the 1960s hippie culture. And they're quite free spirits over at Arbeg, aren't mm -hmm. they? That's another thing we said in the uh, the original episode uh, of our visit to Arbeg. Really playful with their marketing and their designs. Mm. Quite a hippies. lot of humour. I love this <laughs> phrase on the back of the box. Pete and love. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I reckon that'd be Austin Powers' favourite tram. Oh, for sure. He'd be well into that. Hmm. And 2019. Trump. Bang. In the tradition of Ardbeg being an innovator, I don't know how innovative this is. Maybe I should have fucking edited better before I just blatantly copied and pasted <laughs> <laughs> what it said. <laughs> This whiskey's first matured in ex-bourbon casks and then finished in rum casks. Nice. I'm sure other motherfuckers were doing that for a long time before this. Yeah, look. It, it's well, actually, they definitely were. In what episode was it where we said... Um, ah, fuck, it was just recent. Where... was one of the first... Trans Atlantic whiskey deliveries during Prohibition or just after Prohibition. And when they got over there, they brought a fuckload of rum back. They Gee. definitely would have aged yeah, whiskey well, then in, sure in the rum cask, yeah. Your memory's better than mine. I, I couldn't tell you, but we did speak about it recently. You're yeah. right. Yeah, I can't remember which one. We asked down getting a few of these under our belt. And what came out last year? Ah, uh, the black. Ah, uh, the black. The first year that Faisal was cancelled. And technically it wasn't an official Hardbeg Day release. But it, and it more celebrated the 20th anniversary of the Hardbeg Committee, uh -huh. founded in the year 2000. It was finished in Pinot Noir casks from the country that lies the furthest distance from Isla being New Zealand, where sheep outnumber people seven to one. Significantly, yes. Mm. Also read, uh, oh, on the box, there's, there's allusions to the, them calling themselves sort of black sheep, kind of, uh, what would you say, uh, sort of big note themselves in a little way. I was quite cynical of it. You know, they're, their pioneering nature and how they go against the grain. Partly true, but... Well, they've got some form. On. Yeah. And, of course, this year, Rickus. This year, Scorch. Just happened to pick up. I just wanted to show off. Picked up yesterday. My committee release. There is no fucking way in hell we're tasting that today. That's a collector's item, that one. I have ordered uh, the non-committee releases, just the regular pleb version. The only ones I usually get. <laughs> and they haven't sadly arrived yet. If they had have, we'd definitely be cracking them and stacking them. Because you're a, you're a proper committee member with a, with a member number and everything. And a letter. <laughs> a letter from Mickey Heads. I don't know if... Do I have a number? You do. I probably do, according to them. Nah, it's not that. Okay, there we go. What am I? Six six five six Don't zero seven. Don't that information. We're gonna have to bleep the bleep. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you you'll you'll get identity theft to do. <laughs> That's right. You've got to be more careful. You 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 got to be more, a little bit paranoid, a little bit fucking yeah. You know. uh, country boy, man. Fucking leave me doors unlocked. And someone will take your scorch, the Arbeg Dragon. <laughs> um, what did it say in the market? I don't know if it's written on here. Yeah, inspired by Dunnage Warehouse 3 is definitely real and not made up flavour breathing dragon. This whiskey has been matured in our most heavily charred ex bourbon casks. Intense aromas of soot and smoke lie in wait. 
while grilled fair and black licorice mingle with bold notes of antiseptic lozenge. The old Dettol that got you into peated whiskey in the first <laughs> place. Well, that sounds delightful. <clears throat> we won't be sampling that today, though. Nah, we'll, we'll get there soon, probably off air. Or maybe... Well, maybe next year. Maybe next year. We'll include that next year, along with Rickus's Cove Reckon experiment. Indeed. Port cask experiment. And whatever next year's is, too. Hopefully, if we get that in time. Hopefully. Well... They also did... Uh, Ardbeg Moor. I'm assuming that's how it's written. M-O with... A right-leaning accent, which translates as big or magnificent in Gaelic in 2007. And it was a giant 4.5 litre car strength version of the 10-year-old. Jesus. Uh, they only did 1,000 individually numbered bottles. And that was the 10th anniversary of the 1997 Renaissance. Um, they followed up with a second edition in 2008, but there's, I couldn't find much info on that. I don't know how many more they made, Good on. but I reckon if you got a, one of each, you'd be pretty bloody staked. Yeah, you would. Legit. Well. Oh, you're under the grooves now. I am. I, I had to, right. I had to run away from the weekend. No, that's, it's getting better, but it's definitely no 10. It's no. less than half as good. Look, it, 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 it is far less than half as good. And it's just, it's simply not something I'm going to go out of my way to drink. It's mm. not going to be something that I reach for when I'm looking for a dram on the shelf because the 10 exists. Whoa. Whereas the grooves, that is something. The reason you know, I got two bottles when it came out, and the reason that we're onto the second bottle here is because I enjoyed the first one so much. Mm. That was something I just kept reaching for. Yeah, nice. And I'm not much of a nas drinker. As you know, I'm all about spending time in wood. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I found this a really, um, a really intensely mellow dram. Now, I haven't had this in a while. We cracked this bottle tonight, so I, I haven't sampled it in some time. So it'll be interesting to see if you agree with me now that you can smell it and if yeah, I agree with the, myself. The wine really hits me. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's... After, especially after that wee mm. beastie. Does it tell you what casks they were? No, I think it just said red wine casks. Oh yeah, shorty gets a run. Always does. Yeah. But no, I, I quite like the. Uh, the influence of the red wine on the nose. Mm, it reminds me of, uh, it's got the same, without the peat, it's got the same thing happening as that Starwood. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Which was a Pinot, I think, wasn't That's it? That's what I thought. That's mm. why I wanted to find out what went into this. This is, um, yeah, this is quite mellow, hey? It is. It's kind of leathery and... Mm. Um, Just with that little whiny twang up yeah, high. It's, but... it's gentle peat and gentle yeah, smoke yeah. instead of the, the usual you know, bacon head-butting you kind of thing. It's, um, it's a real nice marriage of that gentle... Yeah, the, the influence of the red wine. Mm. And then after a while, I can get that nice sugary sweetness. Yeah, exactly. Like the Arbeg itself comes through, like those toffee notes mm. and the, the maritime notes as well. Really love the design of that bottle. Of the, uh, yeah. Oh, it's cool packaging. Well, you, mm. you always got to give Arbeg a... Um, a tip of the hat for, for the way they market and, and oh. package. But I haven't seen anything as beautiful as that 25-year-old for a long time. It's almost, you know, that, have you tried, I only came across it recently. I don't know if it's new or if I just came across it recently. But it's like a, 
sweet and salty popcorn. Like it's it's like it's salty. I can imagine but it's it. Also got I can imagine it. I'm, sweet dusting I'm a fan to it of as well. like salty chocolate. Yeah. I'm a fan of that, so I imagine it's a similar thing. But there's a sweet and salty, you know, kind of thing going on here. Mm. That I really like. You know, there's a little bit of, a little bit of youth on the tongue as you expect from a nas, yeah. but nothing like the wee beastie. No, there's nowhere near as much pepper dancing. No. Finish is very short, but it's fucking beautiful. Mm. There's a, it's and it's it's kind of chilly as opposed to pepper. Yeah. Got some nice legs too. Mind you, I may have said that because I've just noticed on the back of the box. Actually, I'll read the copy because the copy is quite cool. Here at Arbeg, we've always been passionate about the benefits of an alternative lifestyle. We dig peat, but we also dig crofting, crotcheting, Celtic crosses, and campfires. Isn't it crocheting? It could be. Crotcheting. I wonder if that's, that's like... No, writing, that's def, definitely it's, crotcheting. Writing music, but only using fucking four quarter beats. <laughs> it's, being, it's being crotchety, but only in certain situations. All right, crocheting then. Fucking... I just... I read it how it was spelled. I'm a phonetic boy. Yeah, yeah. All right. In fact, you could call us the ultimate free spirits. But above all, a fiery passion burns in our souls and our casks for our whiskey. And Arbeg Grooves is the latest example of our unorthodox ways. To create this whiskey, we laid it down in wine casks that it had been intensely charred until heavy grooves formed in the surface of the wood. From these experimental dabblings comes a whiskey aromatic with smoked spices, distant bonfires and chilly seasoned meats. Sweet vibes of vanilla popcorn and sooty smokes fade into a mellow haze of apples, fresh flowers and smoked pear. It's the grooviest thing to come out of the Arbeg distillery for decades. So I think that maybe is where I got the word chili from. Okay. I probably subconsciously read it. It's something like salty licorice. Yep. Touch of that menthol. But yeah, definite. The red wine is very well pronounced. That's what sets this apart from it, it every really other hard bag I've it, ever had. Exactly right. It's, it's, it's really well... Um, yeah, put together. Now that I'm reading it too, I'll totally agree with the cinnamon that's up there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, paprika, that might be more power suggestion, but... That is quite good. That's different to anything I've ever had from them before. Mm. Yeah, it really is. And, and it's, yeah, it's well done. That's very well done. Yeah, but they were quite... This is... One of my winter drams. I quite enjoy this on a cold night. Oh, dude, okay. Go back and nose that. Because you've got fuck all left. Oh, wow. That's actually quite nice on the nose now. It is. Maybe it needed time to air. That's really deep toffee. Back, Sorry, the wee beastie now. Really deep toffee. Probably... Yeah, it has smooth. You're going to have to let it sit for a bit. I'm gonna. It's still far better on the nose than the palate. Yeah, that's why I poured a very, very small amount. I just to compare. I've got to, I, you know, I've got to relearn the art of not drinking all my whiskey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I quite like quite like the grooves yeah it's consistent too it's not it's not confused it knows exactly what it is no so that was that was my issue with the perpetuum i thought the perpetuum was a little there was a little bit too much it wasn't as focused as as this is and, and we don't have the perpetuum in front of us but i bring it up because out of the events that I read about 
and I focused more here in Sydney than anywhere else. Uh, the one that I liked the most was the one that they had in 2015 for the Perpetuum mm -hmm. at the International Cruise Terminal, Sydney Harbour. And it would have been a nice venue. It would have been yeah. a really cool venue. But they, I mean, Arbeg always go all out for, for their events. But I, I read uh, a review that uh, <laughs> included, so you walked in, you were greeted with a team of servers with a choice of two Arbeg cocktails. Uh, one sweet, one dry. And you basically had to work out what you wanted to do or what you wanted to check out first. So they had Segway riding, hoverboard racing. They had... Was hoverboard... Uh, probably hoverboard, though, was in those stupid ones that have the the wheels on each side, all the ones where the batteries, they were getting made with cheap batteries that were catching fire. Wasn't there, but you, you, you're probably yeah. right. But um, they had... A shorty circuit, which was robotic dog racing, <laughs> which sounded fucking cool. Oh, tip uh, it out to shorty. They had a harbour, of course, um, and they also had the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Fair now that... The dude I worked with actually owned a DeLorean. Well, uh, th that would have been fucking really cool. Uh, a bunch of... He got sick of everyone asking him where the flux capacitor was. I'll bet. Yeah. Uh, you, you would. Um, but they, they had a whole bunch of, so, cause the, I think the theme was, um, back to the future kind of thing. So they had throwbacks to the eighties, like video arcade console games, like Pac-Man and Space Invaders. Nice. And, you know, new age stuff like hoverboard racing and Segway riding. But yeah, so that, that sounds that, like a really fun event. It would have been, I, I, I think, I mean, obviously we've been doing this for, Jesus, a couple of years now? I can get close. Yeah. Be coming up to a couple of years. So in the time we've been doing this, unfortunately, we've not had the opportunity to do a live uh, big event because they've been online. Mm -hmm. But hopefully when the world opens back up again, we'll get the opportunity to do so. And the and events will be cool. I was going to try and make a Mr. T joke about jibber jabber when everybody's got their jibber jabber. We'd finally be able to have Ardbeg events again. Be good. Or just fucking events in general. Yeah, true. Jesus, remember seeing bands? I actually did get to see a band a while ago. It was a, um, a Guns N' Roses tribute band, supported by a Poison tribute band. <laughs> and <laughs> it was fucking hilarious I thought the bands in themselves are really good but they went a bit over the top I thought with the level of sort of costuming that they had and also the singer from the Poison Tribute band addressed the crowd with an American accent even though they're both Australian bands they they tell you straight up they're Australian bands well they'd have to be Australian bands we live in the, the, the time of our lives where you can't have a band come over from overseas because the borders are fucking shut True. to every other country yeah unless it was an American band that got stuck here and mm. wasn't allowed home that could happen and who knows there may be a poison tribute band that we're here doing their tour of a <laughs> lifetime and can't no. afford a ticket home no. and um he, they stayed in character all fucking night too, well, like, like wigs and all. And I found it really fun. Like they came out, they were getting photos with people and stuff. Like, did they, they're not the real band wow, people. That's yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty weird. Yeah, it was it was highly weird. But remember seeing real bands. Yeah, that's been a fucking long time. When you could like you know stand up and get in the pit and sweat and sing with other people instead of mm. sit quietly at a table a metre and a half distant from your yeah. significant other and not sing. I get stood over <laughs> by security if you get up and start sing. to dance or even if you dance too much in your chair or if you move your chair a little bit too close to the person that you're there with. My wife went to that festival down at Cronulla. I can't remember what it was called. A bunch of Australian bands. Ice House was one of the headliners. I think Killing Heidi. It was a whole bunch of 
eighties and nineties. Aussie rock. And she said, yeah, they kept getting told to sit back down in their chairs. Yeah. They decided to, um, it wasn't going to be seated, but at the last minute they made it seated. I think probably restrictions came back again. And she said occasionally you'd see cops just like, yeah, some dude just doing the bolt, cops chasing after him, probably from breaching, <laughs> breaching some sort of... You're dancing too much. Yeah. You're under arrest. Yeah. You filthy bastard. They said like by the um though for the very last song of the night though everybody got up and just rushed the, rushed towards no, like the front gonna, of the stage like what are you going to kick us all out? That's now? it. We, you, mm. we the, the age old saying you can't arrest all of us. I mean yeah. unless you're the Gestapo, you can't arrest all of us. Did you? Uh, I don't think you, you went with us anyway. Uh, we went and saw back when Soundwave was still a thing before AJ fucked over everybody. Uh, band Trash Talk that we didn't know oh we just yeah we had time we went and checked them out they were fucking brilliant there was mayhem the guitarist I think climbed the right to the stop to the top of the speaker stack and was playing from up there Airborne did that the the singer big no not Airborne singer came yeah, out and got Airborne. everybody to like follow him around like the sound tent came out through the crowd and stuff and then the last song is saying like this is our last song i want everybody to rush the stage they can't fucking stop all of you <laughs> <laughs> you just sort of look on them, the security guard and all the color drain from their face <laughs> it's panic yeah but it was like midday like nobody had had enough beer yet <laughs> everybody yeah, was no, probably, that, that needs probably to, that needs to be a late yeah, afternoon the though. weed was still in everybody's system <laughs> like, like, <laughs> can't be fucked bro <laughs> i'm uh I'm nosing the drum here now. I've mm. moved on. I've moved on from the grooves. Okay. And wow, isn't, Speaking that, of... isn't that tropical? Whoa, yeah. It's tropical Arbeg. There's like pineapple that's and funny. banana and like... shit. And then, that's a weird sensation I've never had before. Getting all those pineapple and banana, but then all of a sudden... It goes kind of flat. Yeah. There's this flat line that comes through. And the, the medicinal you kind of Arbeg. There's or something Isla else in element. there that's strange. It's medicinal tropical. There's something tropical else in medicinal. there that I'd call that's like it's not a food kind of thing. Not a food. It's not generally something that you'd ingest. So what is it? Like a... Something on the nose. It like a moss. I don't usually ingest moss. No, it's, it's got a, like a what we would know as a chemical i think oh okay so like oil or something like something like that yeah like, like machine oil yeah something like that because yeah there is something of it's the, not like acetone or there anything. is something it's... of the mechanical about it but yeah that definitely that banana and pineapple mm, yeah super tropical i mean i can't smell a lot of rum. high end yeah, there's not there's, much down low. No, well, there's there's the, the color is very high end too. <laughs> super pale. Mm. Oh Jesus! She got some nice robe legs though. On yeah. That that is exquisite. That's, a, that's the most that's the most impressive out of the three. I'm really. expecting an oily mouth feel to mm. this by looking at the robe. Uh, why wait? So while we were on the topic of music. Good old Mickey Heads, he facilitated a meeting with committee members in San Francisco back in 2018. And he matched a song to each of their bottlings. But I could only find info on two of them. He did ties in to the cover band I saw. And I went to Sweet Child of Mine. And the 20-something was accompanied by Stairway to Heaven. Nice. Well, 2018, that would have been the... Was it 23-year-old, the 20-something, I think? Well, it's 20-something year old, yeah. Oh, it says what it is, though. I have, I think the one, because they did two. They might have done a couple. Or maybe they did three. I think the one that I have is a 23-year-old, and they did a 22-year-old as well. Just back to that Arbeg drum. Fucking wow. Yeah, God, that's nice, isn't it? That is something. Oh, the sugary, 
cotton candy finish. Mm. Yeah. All that tropical, oh. sugary, rummy goodness. Mm. Really nicely balanced out with that, you know, fucking Lovely salty peaty peat. medicinal yeah. maritime. Oh, yeah. man, for a nest, that's beautifully mm. balanced. Yeah, that's really nice. If it had the same thickness as that Scotia Caribbean cast. Yeah, that's just, it's not, doesn't have the oily mouthfeel I was expecting yeah. or hoping for, I suppose. You know, it looks oilier in the glass than it does on the mouth. It's very smooth. No, no, oh, very, very little pepper, very little spice. I mean, she's a touch young, but nowhere near as young as the first two. And a really nice balance between the that tropical rummy influence. Mm. And That's very well balanced. And the typical Arbeg punch you in the balls <laughs> is there an interesting copy on that box there usually is I like the I like the people that do the marketing at Arbic hmm. it's just tasting notes there's a fuckload of copy on here oh no I love, our passion for festivity is the very lifeblood of our famous island spirit We'll find any excuse for a good old rum bus just get together. Hmm. <laughs> Punny. And this year on Isla, we're adding a dash of carnival colour to our customary Ardbeg Day ritual in a truly thrilling Caribbean twist. So to celebrate, we're all set to revel in this exquisite bottling and its scrumptious jamboree of flavours. In a first for the Ardbeg distillery, we've taken Ardbeg Scotch whisky from ex bourbon casks, then rested it a while in X rum casts from the Americas, giving us Ardbeg drum. Fragrant pine resin, sea spray, wood smoke, dance alongside ripe bananas and pineapple. Lavender, licorice and vanilla sway into rich dark chocolate before parading into a long smoky finish. Fuck, I wish I had the same tongue as mm -hmm. these people did. I'm only halfway through. In an isle of time gone by, on the last day of Feshala Festival, locals transformed everything from tractors to wheelbarrows into magnificent floats. If it had wheels, they decorated it. These vibrant mobile gardens adorned with bright flowers and fabrics were a sight to behold. Starting at the pier in Port Ellen, the procession rolled by the crowds at Ardbeg before honking and tooting its way back to be judged. This was a typically isla cavalcade of colour. It's often said that these caroling gatherings... It's often said that these gatherings first originated to ward off bad spirits, but this hard big day there'll only be good spirits, <laughs> as the nose of drum beats and maracas fill the streets of Port Ellen and hard big lovers gather for a spectacle they won't soon forget. There's a wee bit of history for fish anyway. Oh, nice. Not well, as big a fan of the packaging as the grooves. That's no, a brilliant design on the grooves. Grooves are cool. But I really like the whiskey. Mm. Really like the whiskey. I think it is the peat that um, that kind of do you get that nice sweetness and then the peat just stomps on it mm. and just makes it just goes flat. Yeah, superb, very enjoyable. Mm. Well, you got anything else to add for for our big day? Horikus? I do. Open that. I'm in a good mood. Oh, wow. It's our big day. It is our big day. Let's celebrate in true style with a dream of the Trevon. The Trevon. 19 year old. Batch one. Oh, wow. I'm excited. This is unexpected. <laughs> 
full of surprises. Not you. I'm rounding off with a truly, truly aged R bag. Oh, God, I love the sound of a popping <laughs> cork. That's why I snuck off and washed this. I was wondering why you did that. <laughs> like, dude, I've already portable. Bonus content for you people at home. Something fancy here. Just a sweet, sweet, well aged hard bag. Oh, and straight away on the nose, you can smell the age. I'm just going to put that in front of the wee beastie, <laughs> where it deserves to be. Oh, indeed. By about <laughs> damn near four times. <laughs> but that oh, that's smells lovely and mellow, doesn't, doesn't it? Yeah, it smells, smells like it's spent some time in wood. It still has that same classic Ardbeg 10 flavor just just it's nowhere near as aggressive no it's subdued you know it's 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 had the the fire taken out while mm. the warmth has been left in there you know it's it's subtle it's, it's smooth it's spent enough time in the wood for some of that wood to be coming through on the nose I don't think they've done anything fancy with uh, the the Treban. I think it's just ex bourbon, isn't it? I snuck in some notes. It smells like ex bourbon. Well done for sneaking it in. Matured in American oak and Oloroso sherry casks. Oh, there's some Oloroso. Produced in a small batch every year. Exceptionally rare and ever changing 19 year old draw its inspiration from Islay's Trevan Beach. From the Ardbeg distillery to Port Ellen and beyond, if you follow the rocky coast, you'll discover the captivating soft white sands of Trevan Beach. Bathing is ill-advised, however, in the seemingly tame crystal waters where jagged volcanic rocks pierce the sands beneath the surface. So I'm guessing that's what's... Yeah, that's definitely what the bottle design is. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Lovely robe on it again. Oh, I mean, me cut crystal on. I don't usually see shit behind the etching. I don't detect. There doesn't look to be a lot of Oloroso. In Not the in color. the color, no. Not on the nose either. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. Okay, maybe the, the power of suggestion, but okay. yeah. You know. I'm admiring the yeah the amount of skinny little legs. That you were getting on your robe mm. so it's obviously not terribly viscous bit of black car there that's beautifully smooth Oh, wow. Very salty on the finish. Mm. Long, long salt. Super long. And there is, you can taste the Oloroso. You know, I didn't find it prevalent on the nose, but definitely on the tongue, those high notes, those, you know, sweet raisiny notes are oh, there. Nice and, nice and blended into the, mm. you know, the, the ex-bourbon. And gee, just that, you know, maritime, salty, medicinal mm. isla. So much. That salt is, on the finish, really concentrated. There's some sugar to it. Mm -hmm. The sugar fades quick and you are just left with, yeah. Almost like super salty licorice. Have you ever had that shit? Mm, yep. Yeah, there is a, a licorice aniseed element. Yeah. Like a, 
there's a smoked meat element to it as well. It's not a meaty dram, don't get me wrong. No, it's not meaty at all. There's just a hint of... It's, it's mostly mid and high end. A hint of maybe... Maybe like honey glazed ham. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the wee beastie going back through them. On the nose. That's that fucking, is all that's, full but full blooded toffee on the nose, isn't it? That's really, really it's so much better on the nose than it was on the palate. It really is. Back to the grooves. Yeah. It is like it says, intensely mellow. Yeah. There's yeah, some absolutely. really sharp sharp aromas in there. Oh, and I'm just getting a little bit of char now. Yeah. Yeah, there is some char there. Uh, that that red wine is definitely the hero on the nose. Absolutely. And then on the drum, it's all tropical. You know that banana and pineapple really yeah, ride everything. We've... Everything. They they ride that. You know, um, salty peat. Mm -hmm. And this bad boy's just all no, Arbeg, isn't it? It's just pure. It's just all Arbeg. But one of the classiest Arbegs I've ever known. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Well, how about you? Do you have anything more you'd like to add? Not really, man. It's, um, you know, Arbeg Day... 2021 is is all online you know i'm a, I'm a dragon guy so uh, <laughs> as you listen to this jump online you know they've got some some cool dragon inspired um stuff going on with the dog and dragon in dj barbecue is going to cook up a feed mm. um you know just they're they're going out of their way to do cool and and relevant stuff yeah and they should be applauded for that so jump on check it out get involved and let's look forward to a world where we should have probably checked what time a lot of the events start i can tell you when the some of the events start so the the, the program of virtual events begins with dragon tales at 12 p.m with but that's isla time yeah I would imagine so, yeah. So, what do you reckon? What's Greenwich where they would be, what? Well, let's just say they'd be local behind. Time. They'd be behind. Where, what are we in Australia? We're plus 11, aren't we? Oh, dude, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I think we're roughly around plus 11. I'll agree with so what that's, you have to say. Oh. But let's just say Isla local time, midday, Dragon's Tail. I'm just wondering what that equates to in Australia. Probably something fucking brutal, like 2 a.m. Yeah, well, because uh, Arbeg Day in Sydney is usually Arbeg Night. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it will be in the evening here in... Well, uh, you want any fucking form of warmth that you can get from the sun in Isla, I imagine. Yeah, true. That's probably also why it's in June, because <laughs> it's... Coming up to the longest and warmest day of the year, exactly days of the right. year. So, um, but yeah, so it kicks off at midday, their local time. Um, and then you've got stuff going on basically for the rest of the day. And at 7 p.m. Arbeg local time, the grand finale is the Whiskey Wizard's Lair. Um, so Dr. Bill Lumsden, the Whiskey Wizard, oh, yeah. will be performing nice. a live tasting of Arbeg Scorch and sharing just what makes this fiery newcomer so special. Uh, so, yeah, it's the whole you know medieval fantasy inns, campfire tales. It's, it's uh, seems like a cool event. So get involved and good on Arbeg. Pretty much the last thing I have to say 
is when you get welcomed to the RB committee when via a letter. When, when you're a legit committee member with a member number like this bloke <laughs> over here, not just someone that signs up with an email address. You get a, a letter from Mickey Heads, who was distillery manager at the time, but and still is chairman of the Ardbeg community. He says, in closing, I'd like to draw your attention to rules and regulations, section five, paragraph 17, which reads, the office of a member shall be vacated if he becomes of unsound mind to the extent that he develops a preference for a different spirit, or he is directly or indirectly connected with the dilution of any dram of Ardbeg's single Islay malt whiskey with any substance other than water. Now, hang on. Don't you have some grand fucking experiment planned for Arbeg Day, for the intervening time between Arbeg Day that's, now and well, Arbeg Day next the, year? That's... Are you diluting single malt Arbeg whiskey with something other than water? No, you're not. I no may way. have. Well, you're not in the you're not in your experiment because you're just filling a I port think, season to cask, so you're not yeah, diluting yeah, no. your whiskey. Okay, see, I thought you were alluding. You have gone on. I record, thought you were though. alluding to you the. You have to... gone on record of adding something that isn't Isla whiskey, isn't I Arby created whiskey. my own blend. You did, didn't you? Yeah. So have you? I don't know. The rules, I... the rules are fucking clear, dude. If they're black and white, then yes. If they look I'm, pretty black and white. I mean, that is black text, not white black paper. Black and white. My office should be vacated. Yeah. I. You're out. However, there are... Actually, I can't guarantee that, but I'm pretty confident that there'd be other blends out there that contain Ardbeg. I once diluted Ardbeg grooves with Ardbeg 10 because... Oh, yeah. I, because <laughs> I got... I had a really nice decanter. And only a small amount of each of them, not quite enough. And so I, I, I mixed the arse end of my uh, first Grooves bottle. With... I reckon that's permissible. They're under the same... And I, would, I wouldn't call it dilution. Under the same flag. Yeah. See, I wouldn't either. What I was doing was trying to find a good balance between a port finish and a nice amount of uh, peat, nice amount of smoke. And I think I did that using the Dalmore port finish about 25 mils of that to 15 mils of Ardbeg 10. He is directly or indirectly connected with the dilution of any dram of Ardbeg single <laughs> Isla malt whiskey with any substance other than water. I, I interpret that more as mixing. Well, look, tell us what you guys think. Tell us if Rick mm, deserves to retain his committee membership. Maybe I might I might just send Mickey an email hey. and just say, hey, buddy, as the head of the Arbeg committee, maybe you could let me know whether uh, yeah. Yeah, Rick needs to give up his spot or... Signed Mick, head of the Living the Dream committee <laughs> and purveyor of mundanity. <laughs> Well, look, we'll... <coughs> well, we'll see what Mickey has to say. But you've fucking thrown I'm yourself actually, under my, the bus there my, as well. My heart rate's just gone up a bit, actually. I'm, I'm a bit worried. Well, you've, you've thrown yourself under the bus as well. I was happy to let that slide. <laughs> nah. <laughs> but that's what's inspired the 10-litre the cast project. Uh, I, I think the 10-litre cast project's a good project, and I look forward to Arbeg Day next year when we sample it. Live. Mm. Well, on that note, brother, lovely way to spend our big day with you. Yeah, damn straight. Hooked a few. But I thought we were a bit rough on the wee beastie, actually. Now now that it's sat out for the past 45 minutes, that's gotten way more accessible. Lovely deep tones. Yeah, nice deep toffee on the nose. She is still young and rough as guts. Yeah, it is still young. The peppers died down a bit, but she's... The makings of a good whiskey are there. Yeah, the foundations are there. They've just, yeah. they've just been nipped in the bud. Yep. And you know what I always say, Rick? That's a fucking whiskey that needs more time in wood. Whereas this 
is the other end of the spectrum. Thank you for our little bonus. <laughs> you most welcome. Slancher. Slancher. God, that crystal rings out nicely. It really does. We should do that again before we go. And before we go, feel free to you know jump online and leave us a comment. Jump in touch. Uh, tell us what you like, what you don't like, where you'd like to see us go. If you like it, tell someone about it. Leave us a review. Any of that kind of stuff that, that would you really do for other people. Thanks, Dreamers. Oh, Slancher. man. Slancher. <laughs>